This episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So this is the Boston WordPress Meetup. My name is James Coletti. And my name is Trey. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. So if you're new here, we've been around for like three years, just over 800 members. Um, you can find us at bostonwp.org. And... And the hashtag tonight is uh, EWPM328. So uh, we have a couple of uh, intro slides. Uh, one thing that I wanted to do first um, was give a great big thank you to Nadella. Uh, actually, we haven't given enough credit. We've uh, been taking over a lot of the filming lately. And um, I also want to give a shout out to Tom. Uh, whenever it all can't fit in, 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 in. Yeah, so you guys do like video and they record all these sessions so if you miss them or if you do two sessions at once and you want to go to one and you can't see the other you can get them online that's because these guys edit, uh, video and edit them every month so uh past present and future speakers we can't thank you enough um you know lately we've been getting a barrage of new speakers and new topics and it's been great so thank you to the community and uh, any of our volunteers or contributors, you know, suggest the meetup, suggest the topic on, on the meetup.com site. Um, give us some feedback, and, and we take that all in, and we try to make this, look, you know, as best as we can. And uh, finally, you guys, you know, we wouldn't be here without you. So thanks for showing up. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Give a round of applause for everybody. So I wanted to give a, a big shout out to uh, our two sponsors, Microsoft Nerd. Again, can't thank you enough. Great venue, accommodations, AV, Wi-Fi, and some drinks. Um, so if you see the staff up front, tell them thanks. And finally, our last sponsor, HostGator. Um, they have an awesome one-click WordPress install. Uh, eventually, I'll be doing another beginner class. So we'll probably both be doing beginner classes, hopefully on weekends. So stay tuned. Um, and we do have a discount code, Boston WP Meetup, for 25% off your hosting services. We're at Camp Boston, um, July 23rd and 24th. We're, you know, we're really trying to pound this in because we know there's a lot of press. We want you guys to get first dibs at the tickets. Um, so just keep following us. Uh, we're at Camp Boston on Twitter, we're at CampBoston.com, and we're at Camp Boston at gmail.com. Are tickets available already? No, not yet. Uh, they will be soon. Finally, um, James and I have started a new project, and we're pretty much ready to uh, to launch this. It is called Live WPTV, and because the meetup is so big and so formal, we really don't get a chance to meet every one of you and talk about different topics or specific topics that you might want us to cover. So we, we're planning on launching this in May. Um, we have a couple of episodes right now, but it's a monthly WordPress TV show, um, generally at local bars or restaurants. So if you want to get to know us a little better, if you want to see some of our antics and get the real truth behind some of the themes or plugins, that's probably the best place to do it. Um, let's see here. It's usually a 30 minute show. Um, of the latest, greatest theme, plugin, pop issues. We're on Twitter at LiveWPTV. And the first video is up, LiveWP.TV. The second and third videos are in process, and we have a fourth one starting to yeah, So it's, it's, it's a great uh, way for us to connect with you guys on a more informal level. Um, there's a lot of people we'd like to get on to interview. If we have any speakers, we'll try to get them on the show um, early in the month to interview them so you can kind of see what they're up to. Um, definitely email us anything you want us to talk about on the show. Sometimes we stream it live, and of course, if you want to come out and hang out with us and have a couple of beers, uh, follow us on Twitter, and we'll let you know where we're at. And this is why we've also been asking to uh, submit questions, because we want this to be a user-oriented show. We want to answer your questions, and you know, although you know, we, you might talk to us at the meetup, and we might not remember, you might ping us again. You know, the best way to do it is to send us an email to fans at livewp.tv. Be sure to answer it. Or, you know, if you have questions the day of, send them to us or, or even shout them out to us and we'll try to answer them. Yes? Are you going to turn these into uh, audio podcasts? Yes. So yes. It'll be on iTunes very shortly. Yeah. Yeah. 
finally, I have to put a disclaimer out here. If you attend, you do agree to be filmed. Um, <laughs> small disclaimer. Um, what else? Next month. So I think we have a, uh, a topic already lined up for dev and design. That's Carboogle. Yeah, you stand there and you have no idea. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I made these slides up randomly. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get oh. here. Yep. Hey. He's right there. That's me. Cool. Give us a quick, uh, you're on the spot. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry, Jesse Friedman. I got a face full of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be highlighting Carboodle, which is a um, 20,000 page uh, auto directory that I built on WordPress. But I'm also going to be talking about uh, bringing WordPress out of the box and uh, harnessing the inherent features of it. So it might be, right now we're labeling it as step design. We might move it towards a ge just a general topic. If we do move it to dev design, then the second topic will be another month of either site critiques or to be determined. Um, I might come up with another topic uh, on another framework. And of course, if anyone wants to speak here, please come forward. We're always looking for volunteers. Any questions? All right. So tonight, oh, sorry, date. I, I already forgot my slides. Uh, April 25th, save the date. Hmm? That's the next meetup. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, next month. I am out there. So framework bake off. Tonight, our host, Alan, He's going to be uh, talking about uh, some of the three major theme works, uh, it's Thesis, Headway, and Suffusion. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be helped out by volunteers, David and Jen, um, the representatives here, and we'll have these slides available on our uh, Boston WP site once the videos are out. So if you guys have any other questions, um, otherwise we'll hand it over. Bergstein, and um, I'm here uh, with my esteemed colleagues, and we're going to be um, uh, sharing with you some of the things that we learned about looking at uh, sites through uh, the filter of three different popular frameworks, um, theme frameworks. These, by the way, are not in any kind of order in terms of the most popular or the best. Uh, that's not what we're here to do. Um, honestly, we probably could have taken a look at a dozen or more different frameworks, um, and uh, we just chose these because we kind of each had a bit of an affinity for each one. We had a little bit of uh, experience in working in each one, uh, and you can go on and on and on uh, looking at these. Um, I'll explain the exercise that we uh, uh, we designed in a minute, but uh, we really uh, encourage you to, um, if you're thinking about different frameworks, and remember. And what the frameworks really are, they work on top of WordPress, WordPress being the content management system uh, and the engine that drives things. Well, then you can put these frameworks on top of WordPress to make it easier for you to do different things, make it easier for you to develop, um, to be able to use certain types of um, approaches uh, that uh, wouldn't be as easy just working in, in a plain vanilla WordPress installation. Um, and by the way, on top of a framework are skins. So skins being more cosmetics. So in terms of terminology, uh, we're working at that middle level. Um, frameworks that add all sorts of functionality to a basic WordPress installation. So um, before we get started, actually, I'd like to kind of get a, a little quick poll here. Uh, a show of hands, how many people are Familiar with thesis as a um, as a theme, uh, maybe half 
of this group here. And have you guys actually developed a site in Thesis? So more than just a, a I'm familiar with the name, but I mean, have you actually tried it out? Okay, so um, what do we have? Again, show of hands, those people who actually tried out Thesis, uh, maybe 20. All right, um, how about Headway? How many people have actually kind of tried out Headway? Uh, looks like about eight people. And um, Suffusion, how many people have tried out Suffusion? Well, you don't count, you're presenting. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, I don't have. Um, so virtually nobody, so this is, this is good. This is uh, something that new that we're bringing to everybody's attention. Um, and so we chose these three also somewhat purposely, more than just, uh, as I said before, we have the affinity towards it, but also um, uh, they each offer something unique and different. And that's really what we're gonna try to do is point out to you what, what makes it unique, what differentiates one from another. Um, the, um, the challenge we've decided would be to create uh, a, a quick basic site, um, a site that would have um, about five different pages, a static home page um, with various different graphics, um, a standard page that would have some sort of video, maybe some articles and some video on it, uh, another page that would be a standard page with rotating images, a, um, a blog page, and then also, um, a squeeze page. Everybody know what a squeeze page is? No, a squeeze page is a, a pretty much a standard sales page where you get rid of all sorts of distractions. The, the purpose of that page is to squeeze you down to make you, ulti to bring you ultimately to be able to make one decision point, which is to say, I'll buy it. And so it brings you to a form. And so um, uh, you'll see, you see a lot of that in a lot of different websites where um, all it really is is a landing page, it's a sales page, and it doesn't have any other distractions with any other sidebars or any articles. It's just there to sell you something, uh, or get you to sign up or take some action. So those are the five pages that we wanted to do. The goals, again, were to understand some of the unique aspects of each of the frameworks, um, see some examples of how to create similar pages in each of these frameworks, um, how to handle some customization, and we'll be discussing the pros and cons as well, as well as what the learning curve might be, um, what some training assets and tutorials and pricing structure that's available to you. Um, we're not selling these, by the way. We're not affiliated at all. We're not affiliate marketers for any of these. Uh, so um, we're not looking to pick a winner, by the way. Uh, we just really wanted to understand the distinctions between the frameworks. Uh, we use the latest versions that were available as of this week. Um, to my knowledge, uh, they've not been up, upgraded this week, uh, but the latest versions are there. Again, uh, the presenters, uh, David Gadarian from Gadarian Digital uh, will take on Headway. Uh, Jen Nickerson of Jen Mears Web Design uh, will handle Suffusion, and um, myself, Alan Bergstein, uh, will do the thesis demo. And uh, the idea is to take about 15 minutes to do um, each demo, um, and we'll go in in, uh, in order, and then what we'll do is then we'll open it up to everybody for about 15 minutes or however long you guys want um, to then take questions, um, which you can pose to the panel. So um, let me get started here and, and kind of show you the um, the elements that we started with, the assets that we were working with in common. These are very fancy. You see some very pretty. Uh, pictures, um, a little bit of uh, very unsophisticated cropping of some images um, that we'll use in, in certain areas. Um, we have things like a ping art element there as the footer. We have some um, uh, really, really sophisticated greeting. Um, if anybody um, can speak hillbilly, there it is. I hope we haven't offended anybody by that. But, uh, if you don't know Duck Island, by the way, duckisland.com, if you ever need Greek games, it's a great site for that. And um, some, um, uh, actually some code to a YouTube video that we just picked up of a, of a potter. And um, uh, we all started with this, and again, the idea was to kind of create a site that resembled one another, so that we could then go in and we can kind of discuss, all right, did we, were we able to do this easily, or was it easier in one? framework versus another to, uh, to get it done. Um, so 
this is um, sort of what the site, we, we all kind of hope to get to something that looks a little like this. So I'll take you quickly through and then I'll show you a little bit about these. Well, incidentally, we did think about this originally that we were actually going to like write the live code and actually create the pages right here in front of you. And there's no way we're going to do anything live like that in front of a, a group of people like you who actually know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> that wasn't going to work. Um, but we actually spent a lot of time preparing these and um, uh, we'll show you how we can take it apart a little bit and kind of give you. If you do want to actually know specifically how we did certain of the little tricks that we might have done, um, we'll each be very happy to talk to you about, about that afterwards or for whatever. Or contact us afterwards. Um, it really is a learning experience. Um, why do we do a Potter site? Um, really for no other reason than I had a couple extra credits that were expiring in one of the, uh, the Photoshop's photo sites and, and I had to use them up like that night and these were very colorful and I figured this would be a nice, nice thing to do. Um, so uh, we have, uh, in this case, the, uh, uh, the site, you see we've got a banner, we've got um, some uh, text on the banner. Uh, the banner was created in Photoshop and it was then uh, create, uh, made into a ping. Um, we have, uh, in this case, uh, three static images that kind of stack up on this. Um, and a headline we have, you'll see um, a color background on this page. You won't see this color on any of the other pages. Um, so we intentionally try to show you how you can just do certain things on one page and not necessarily have to have it applied to the whole site. Um, we have um, a navigation that's, that's embedded into the header, as you can see, it's tucked up nicely. Um, so this is not a standard type of, of a uh, navigation menu, but it took a little bit of customization. We each attempted to do this with our frameworks. So we've got the home page, and you'll see um, that when you hover over it, it changes, and you get that little ceramic cup behind it, in this case. Um, We've got the video page that looks a little like that. And if you click on it, it'll play. It's just it's got the embedded code from YouTube. Um, we have a pottery page that has some articles and um, has some areas where you could be <coughs> putting things over here. These, these widget areas could contain ads. They could contain any kind of a widget that you could put in. Again, the intent here was not to show you the whole scope of how you load up widgets, but I think you all probably are familiar with what you could put in there. Um, we have the blog page, which has this um, rotating image uh, gallery over here, as well as standard blog posts, which will show up over here. And um, we have the uh, squeeze page, which um, I took artistic license and actually uh, borrowed um, <coughs> the um, HTML code from somebody who sells squeeze page software. So I, I'm not necessarily endorsing it, but I figured, okay, well, I'd actually talk about squeeze pages if you ever want to <coughs> learn about how to create these very easily. You know, here's somebody who seems to have all the right elements, and, and actually it does look pretty good. So, but uh, at the bottom end of the squeeze page, Here's the contact form that's embedded right into it. That's, that was added in with a uh, um, uh, fast secure contact form. It's, it's a free plugin that you can get. Um, and it's got all sorts of functionality. And I, I didn't expand upon that, except just to be able to show you that, how easy it is to put it in. So you see all different types of layouts in, in this site that hopefully you know, looks together. So question might be then, you know, how do we get there? How do, how do we do that? So, um, if we take a look at the, um, let me go back to the homepage. Oh, you got breadcrumbs too. It's a breadcrumb trail. Um, so if I go over to the dashboard, you're all familiar with the standard WordPress dashboard. Um, along the side here, you'll see that there's some new, uh, new areas, including a whole large area with all sorts of options and functionality that you can get to that's, that's uh, for thesis. Um, and so, um, again, we've, ins we've already installed thesis. We're, we're assuming that you know how to do, and you could install a theme that 
that's not what we're trying to show here today, except that uh, once it's working, then what, what do you get? What does thesis add to a standard WordPress? Well, what thesis adds is, is just a whole slew of options and, and, a, and a big ass save button, <laughs> which is, I guess is sort of their, um, their little uh, claim to fame, I suppose. Um, but th that's actually very, very important because as you probably all know from WordPress, if you don't hit save, all the time, you are working up with that. If you don't hit save, whatever you've just done isn't going to happen. So, you know, they've got a very visual way to remind you. And if anybody's offended by that, they actually have a way to go in and change the words. So, but, but that's that is off the, out of the box. Uh, I mean, off the shelf uh, uh, window from that. These um, they have two uh, main um, areas within their admin. They've got site options and design options. Um, and as you would imagine, the site options control things that run globally across the site. Um, and they would affect things like the navigation um, or, uh, and in the case of navigation, I'm a little ahead of myself, they actually, they give you a choice. Um, you could default to a standard WordPress navigation and, and WordPress uh, 3.0 has some nice new navigation functionality, which we didn't have before, or you could use the thesis. I still, am doing a thesis installation, I personally prefer to still use theirs because it kind of keeps it all together. Uh, but you can add in all sorts of things about um, um, what goes in as far as um, SEO is concerned. That's one of the big benefits you get with a framework like thesis. A lot of SEO is built right into the package. Um, there's all sorts of different options that you can, you can go through here. Um, stats and tracking scripts, you can add in all sorts of customization, um, the ability to add in and bring other things into this. They build it right into their admin up front, which is kind of nice. From a design option point of view, uh, again, they've got all these little drop down areas so that you can, you can build your layout. This is not a visual framework. Headway is visual. We're going to see that in a little bit. But it is a point and click. There's options that you can select that do things. You can, you can select, I want this page to be three columns. I want it two columns, one column, et cetera. You can select the column width. One thing that I, I will point out, to me it's a con. It, it's actually both a pro and a con. Um, Thesis does an extraordinary job of giving you great um, functionality and, and controls of things like fonts and, and columns and padding and, and all sorts of things that are done in uh, incredible mathematics and algorithms and, and such that I couldn't even begin to explain. And our friends from Facebook probably do it you know, every minute of their waking, waking day. But um, they have what they call a revolutionary layout generator. Um, and their point is that uh, Things like topography and visual clarity are very, very important aspects of the site. And properly setting type on the web um, is an exercise in mathematical precision. Would that be a fair statement? So I'm used to looking at, at a page and I say I want that to be 900 pixels wide and I want to subdivide it three ways. And, and that's the way that I think because I can divide 900 by three and I can understand that and come up with a number that's probably reasonably close. <coughs> You can't do that exactly in thesis. So it's, a, it's somewhat of trial and error. The end result is you're actually going to get a better site because there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind it. I would love it if there was just a way to say, I want the site to be 1,000 pixels wide, 900 pixels wide, and then everything falls from that. So to me, again, I think that's one of the cons, but there, there is reason behind it. Um, so you can, you can set that, you can set things like the column order to give these nice drop downs over there. Over here, that you can decide, well, on the basic site I want it to be wide, or two narrows, or, or whatever you want. You can choose things like, do you want this to be a page framework or a full width site, or do you want padding around things on your displays? Um, how do you want your display options? How do you want your byline set? How do you want your posts to read? Again, lots of uh, ability to customize all sorts of aspects of your your website and your blog post. And we don't have the time to go into each of these individually. That's not what we're really trying to do, except to show you that you have 
I think there's about 150 different options in total of which you can click things and make things happen. And that's, that's one of the big advantages of Thesis, that you can do that. Uh, in order to um, uh, get a site that looks like this, um, the way that I started was I first uploaded a, that header that I had designed in, in uh, uh, Dreamweaver, and um, they have a nice way to do that, where there's, um, right over here, this header. Um, you can tell it things of what you want. You want the size of the site. Um, you, can, you can set what's the body type of your site, uh, but they have a nice upload somewhere, which I just lost. Um, pardon? And it's uh, header image. And left navigation. Left navigation, and there it is. Got it. Okay. So um, right there, header image, and. Um, and again, very easy, you just, you know, it's your standard upload from um, wherever you might have that. You put that in place, and you can remove it, you can edit, you know, it's, a, it's an easy thing to do. They don't have one for the footer, I wish they did actually, it would be nice if they, if they had that. The footer was a little bit more challenging. Um, you can also upload a favicon, which is kind of nice, and uh, it makes it very, very easy. Um, you can, um, the other thing about thesis is thesis, they have this, this notion of it's future-proof. Um, how many people have ever um, uploaded the latest version of the site only to wipe out all the changes that you, you so exquisitely did, have done and spent all those hours on? Um, they, they figured that out, and they figured out a way that you actually have, uh, you, you're gonna work and you're gonna customize two files, your CSS file and, and, and your PHH file, and, and they're separate, they're in a different area, so that when the next version of the, uh, we're working on 2.8, if 2.9 comes out, uh, it doesn't overwrite all of the settings. We also have ways for you to save your settings, so if you need to copy them to another site, you can do that. Great. Um, so you work in these file editors here, and how many times have you like, you know, tried to find, well, where is that, that CSS? It, you know, it's like, you can go through layers and layers and layers on, on, and, and try to find it, and very difficult, right? And, and they've created this uh, in the framework, a very easy way to handle it. And you can put it all into, into one of the two files. And uh, these will overwrite any earlier settings that you have. I, you do have to be aware of any some settings that you might have done earlier, because if you wanted um, certain things set up a certain way or a certain color, you may be inadvertently overriding decisions. And But you probably have to face that with any kind of a website or any framework just be aware of that, how it all works out. But they do make it pretty easy for you to do, which is good. So, a, a lot of um, what we've got here is written in, and this is stuff that I coded in CSS, and I'm, I'm not a, uh, I wouldn't consider myself a coder, but I've, I've gotten at least somewhat familiar with this that I can make changes to things. And um, you can learn from others, and, and in fact, learning from others is actually one of the biggest advantages I think that thesis has. It's got an extraordinary user community. Um, and their forums that they have um, are <coughs> encyclopedias. I mean, you can go in there and you can, you can um, certainly post a question to somebody. And in my experience, I've gotten the answers within you know, 15 minutes to some challenging questions or some new direction. That, to me, is, is incredibly valuable to be able to have that. But, but just to look up and, and to do a search on all of the questions that people have asked is invaluable too. And since they have, I don't know, 30,000 pages of, of prior questions and posts or whatever, often I'll have my question answered just by looking. And that's very, very useful. Uh, so coming back over here, if I go in and I just want to show you quickly how some of this was built. So I'm going to go to a um, page that I've already I'm going to go and I'm going to take my CSS that's been commented out and copy that. I just have it in a, in a text file here. 
Um, now I'm going to go back over here to my dashboard, my custom file editor for CSS, and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to hit the save button. Now, if I've done this right, I've just basically broken my site. So let's refresh that, and let's see. Yeah, great. So here we have now what's more of the out of the box. This is what you would get without all of the fancy CSS that I had just put in. And so you'll see things like way up there, you know, that's that's your navigation, those are your pages that, that it picks up. Um, over here, uh, you've got you know black on a white background. You've got the images that are just sort of laid in on one page. Um, but there's not a lot of formatting here. So how do we get some of that, you know, those, those tricks done? Well, if I go back here to my custom file editor and I take a look at the navigation menu customizations that I've done, um, where I said, well, I really want to have this position in, in a certain way. I want this position relative to the page. And I want to make the background transparent. And I want to have hover overs and Instead of just text, I want to use this image here that's going to be visible on the hover over. Um, let's start with that. So now if I save the custom CSS that I just did and go back and refresh this page, hopefully, but I think, there we go. So now, that is really relatively few lines of custom CSS said, put the navigation somewhere else. Take it from there and put it here. It's positioned relative to the top of the page, relative to the right margin. Change the text, put a little green line under there. All of those things that you know are the nuances that you might like to add in, you're able to do. Um, if we say, well, all right, let's, let's go back to the custom CSS and let's look at <coughs> the next group here, the background and footer customization. Well, I wanted to put that, that little starry purple background there. So let me that would be that code there, and um, I wanted to add in a purple on just a page. I didn't want that the page framework, which you see is, is white, to be. Um, I only wanted to be purple on one page, and I'm going to show you how that's done. So let me go and get rid of those, and now if I go back to my site and I hit refresh, we should have, yes, great. We now have a nice background that's just a ping, you know, a little pile, and we've got this purple, and you'll notice that that purple is only on the home page. If I go to another page, the page is now white. So. That's cleverly handled, and again, Thesis makes that pretty easy because you can go in, if I go to my page, which is this one here, and edit it. Um, if you're familiar with the fields that WordPress, standard WordPress gives you, you know, here you can see I've just literally dropped in the images that are in here. I could open that up a little wider, but those are just my images with some, you know, formatting on that. But down here, this is something you only get in thesis, which are all of these fields that give you um, all sorts of ability to add in SEO, meta tagging, additional functionality, additional styling, um, information about your, your uh, uh, thumbnails and images and JavaScript, and it goes on and on and on. Um, things that you only get in thesis. So, one of these little boxes is a very little field there. It's called CSS class. And in the CSS class, I can declare, I can put in a code style. In this case, I have, I have called it purple page. How's that for creative? Right? But it's called purple page. Can you see that? All right, there it is. Okay, right here. And same over there. And so going over to my custom file, if I were to go in and get back to that um, custom file editor and 
that's as simple as going in here and you'll notice that here we go two lines of code right over here we're just declaring a purple page style with the background color and now all I can do any page that I want to have that purple that fills the background page I just have to put that in that one little field and those will and only those pages will appear purple. So again, thesis makes it kind of easy for you to do that. Um, let's quickly show you another couple of things that are a little, that are kind of cute. Um, let's get back here. Uh, well, again, the subpage was created as easy as going in to thesis on that page and get to the page mark. And uh, edit the page, and it gives you the ability to, first of all, pick a template that in this case was no sidebars. All right, so it removes all the sidebars. That's built in thesis. Um, I just literally, I had cut and paste from this other website where I just grabbed the, uh, the HTML. Um, I think I pasted, I might have pasted it in, in HTML versus visual. And then at the end, I just added in the little uh, meta text that you need from um, the contact form and just laid it in place. And you know, here I put it in orange if I want this to be in a different color. Let's go over here on the color editor and add that and then update it. And when I go to the page, voila. It is now um, updated and um, just like you would expect in WordPress. Oops. You know, now that, that line of type is green and the form is there. So again, very, very simple and um, uh, to use these. So um, I think that that's really the main points that I wanted to make here. Uh, I'll show you quickly the pros and cons that I found, um, what makes thesis unique. As I mentioned, um, support is very, very good. There's a ton of user-created tutorials that are out there. Um, lots of administrative options. Uh, very elegant, elegant uh, interface, which is good. The customizations are future-proof. Um, they're hooks and filters. They have this notion of, of hooks that they've built. So if you have a page, Again, it's not a visual editor, but you can place things in certain areas. If I wanted that navigation to be, to appear not at the top of the page, but if I wanted that to appear above the multimedia box right here, I can easily remove it from one place, unplug it, unplug the hook, and plug it in wherever I want it. And these are standard hooks that are built in and very easy for you to do that. Um, but it does have a built-in multimedia box, um, certainly, you can you can add in all sorts of widgets, and they're out there. But it, it's very functional. Um, Google Font support is built in, if that's important to you. Um, it's been around for a while. I mean, there's 36,000 downloads of it. Um, there's probably half as many you know, sites that are out there. Very active community. Uh, tons of skins that are available on top of that, which is nice. And um, a personal and uh, and developer pricing. I think it's about $90 personal and about twice that for the developer. Um, it's a one-time fee. They um, Every time they come up, not just with the small versions, but, but major versions, it, it's no extra charge for you once, once you buy it. Um, and they have all sorts of discounts available through affiliate marketers. And if you yourself want to be an affiliate marketer, um, they've got a nice program for that. So the, the cons, um, Things that I found harder to do, um, it isn't a visual editor. Again, it's not what you see is what you get. Um, and if you're not comfortable with, if you want to do customizations, I mean, if you want to work out of the box, you can do some really neat things and just, you know, take a stand. But if you do want to do some customizations like the navigation that I showed you in purple pages, yeah, you have to be comfortable with some of the CSX um, and NPAD. Uh, syntax. I mean, that's really, you probably wouldn't be here if you weren't at least somewhat comfortable in wanting to do that. 
Um, there can be somewhat of a trial and error unless you really know what you're doing, but frankly, if you really knew what you're doing, you probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, it's not that simple to add things like more sidebars. They give you two. You can add. I mean, I, I've experimented. I've spent time. I've added uh, nine on one page just to see if you can do it. And you can, but there's a lot of coding to get it there. Um, will there be the next version? Um, version 1.8 has been around for a while. Um, there's no indication on the community forums that they're in beta testing of 2.0. There's some talk about 2.0, but they've been talking about 2.0 for six months. And I think with what Headway has done, with uh, what other frameworks have done, the developer is going back and really trying to, I mean, he wants to be the number one site. I think Thesis probably is the number one um, uh, paid for framework anyway. But that's, I'm sure, is what his intent is. So he's got to come out with something that's really going to leapfrog that. And um, it's hard to change things. It should be simple, a 404 error page. And that should be an easy thing. And, and you can do it, but it's, it's a bit complicated. And, and adding in another, it's easy to do two or three different layouts. But if you want to add four or five or a different layout on every page, that, that gets tricky. You can do it, but you've got to know for it. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I want to share with you about thesis. I'm going to now turn this over to, uh, to Dave, and um, we'll now see what, uh, what we can do with Headway and if there's any differences. And I'll be back with you later. So uh, thanks, I'm Dave Kedarian, and uh, very excited to be here. I want to thank Alan for putting this together, and invite me, certainly, James and Kurt, for, uh, Kurt, say, for uh, running this group. So I'm just going to dive in here, and um, you know, the big thing that I've kind of built, I built my own site on Headway, and the thing that I found after having spent more time building this site is the more time I spend with Headway, the more I like it, um, and the more I realize that these guys have really spent a lot of time thinking about what my needs are going to be. So, um, you know, the big thing with Headway is it's a visual editor, drag and drop. It's a, a huge component of what they do. But before we kind of get into that, I just want to show you some of the, the basic uh, configuration. When you start with Headway. Uh-oh. You broke it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so here's the basic configuration that they kind of offer you. And um, see this kind of whole thing tabs, nothing special to it. The, I think the ones that most people really kind of dive into is the posts. You can do a lot of customization in terms of what you want your post to say. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I'm a PC guy, so figuring all this out, but you can, for example, you can put your name, you can put the dates, and just kind of where you want them, when you want them, but the SEO, I think, is really the big one. Um, and they baked a lot of this in. I think they looked at a lot of what Thesis has done. They looked at all-in-one SEO plugins. It is a pretty popular one that a lot of people use. And so you can kind of just um, name your pages how you want, whether you want to include your site name or not up to you. Um, we'll get into some of this other stuff shortly. The meta content, the home word, home page. Um, this one is kind of an interesting one. The, the no follow or allow following or comments. Um, they got some easy export and import tools. Um, I won't get into tools. Easy hooks I am going to talk about shortly, but the, let's just kind of talk about the visual editor. So this is kind of where Headway really distinguished itself. And I'll just kind of go through a few things real quick and then we'll dive into some of the bigger things. Um, here's the top level. We're going to talk about linking because I think that's pretty neat. One nice aspect of Headway is unlimited sidebars, um, which I think is really neat. Um, and they also have a nice way to, to kind of connect the various sidebars. 
We're going to show you a, a quick demo of the live CSS editor. I think that's also a nice feature where you can just do CSS on the fly. Um, and then wed widgets, et cetera, easy hooks. Um, but in any event, and then here you can see where we are. We're, uh, right now we're on the system, the home. We can do the blog, uh, wherever we want to go, or we can go to various pages. Um, you can see the pages that we built. So these are the pages. So anyways, this is kind of the one of the big pieces. Is, let me just kind of go through the, the left-hand panel here. Style and design, I'm going to spend a little more time on shortly. The header, um, this is pretty nice. You want it to put that nice image up here. It's just as simple as um, either uploading it from your computer or putting in a, uh, putting in a link if you wanted to put it into your, to your media. Header resizing, just automatically resizes it. That's kind of a nice little piece too. Um, options, if you wanted to, you know, obviously we stripped down a lot of this. Um, navigation search bar, we ended up taking out, but you can kind of get a sense of, they, they want you to really be able to play around with a lot of this, this stuff here. Navigation, they've done something kind of interesting with this, which I haven't done and um, I'm reluctant to, to play with it right now, but if you enable the uh, this little button here, you can actually drag and drop your nav bar to just move it on the fly, which is a nice little piece. Uh, footer, also kind of nice, fixed and fluid, whether you want to add these other um, things. One thing I found similar to Alan was didn't have a way to, to just drop in an image in the footer, um, but I'll show you the CSS on that pretty easy, pretty straight ahead. Uh, copyright, you can just put whatever you want there, and if you wanted to um, include the headway attribution, I think only a developer license you know, allows you to, to remove that. Um, if you have the personal use license, it's uh, mandatory. Um, site dimensions, this was actually pretty cool. This is, I heard Alan talking about it. Um, you can just kind of make the site wider or skinnier. Um, just on the fly, let's just take a look at the site right now, and then I'll just actually save that, just to show you what happens. And you can see I made rounded corners, if you want to add to the top and bottom, um, I'm going to make them bigger, I'll make the corners just a little more rounded, just because we can, and then um, save it, and then the visual editor is going to ask me to either reload or uh, but just to make it easy, reload. You can see the site just got wider. It's actually going to be a little off kilter now. Um, and the, the, the top, obviously, it's got an image there, so I didn't fix it, but it's a little more rounded. That's important. So, but the big piece of, of kind of where all the activity happens is right here in the style and the uh, design editor. So, you want to make changes. I'm actually going to show you. They have this just massive drop down, and whatever you want to change, they can kind of tell you. There's a bunch of leaves. We're going to show leaves in a second. Um, post titles, for example. Now, if I want to call that edit that element out, I just hit it, and you can see it just highlighted it. And now I can just change it to, to something else. Um, if I don't like the typeset or if I want to try something different, I want all caps, some caps, or bold, or just kind of just do it all right there. Um, this is pretty powerful. It, 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 uh, it's just a, it's a very visual way to edit your site, which is uh, a huge plus. Uh, on the nav bar, you know, I did a couple of things just in the nav bar here, and then I had to do a little CSS to move it, which I'll show you real uh, momentarily, but there's not much to it. Um, so I also wanted to show you just linking pages, because it's something we talked about. So you'll notice I have a, this sidebar is right here, it's I guess the blog sidebar. Um, and over the pottery page, you'll notice it's gonna say that it's
Okay, so we're at the pottery page, and you can see it says it's linked to the blog page. Um, I think you can see that. It's a little cut off, but take my word on it. So, so I'm really going to just uh, go into my linking options, and I'm going to say don't link it. And just like that, if I wanted to create a, a separate sidebar for this page, I could, which is um, well, eventually I will. I think what you're doing is, is you're specifically linking a new page to a layout. That's you correct. Done before. It's not that yeah. you're linking the data, you're yeah. linking the layout. Linking the sidebar specifically, and then the, the body of the page, I can just do whatever I want. So you'll notice that it's, um, it's no longer there. Uh, another big piece that I think is a huge asset for Headway and made the video page specifically with this in mind is the ability to add multiple columns. Uh, you can add horizontal columns or vertical columns. Um, and you can drag and drop them, which is also very nice. So I just want to kind of demo that for you. Um, so leaves and columns. Um, so now I'm going to click Enable. And as you can see, I guess, this, this part I was I never quite figured out, obviously. Um, it shows the opposite. Challenge to it, yeah. It doesn't even affect the Oh, here, a range. You can resize them anyway. Um, but you can click and drag them, and I'm sorry about that. that that's not demoing the way I was hoping it would. So just like that, um, and so that's kind of nice. You can see that this top column here, it's actually just a vertical column, and then you can create a, a custom footer column as well, which is, you know, if you try to design sites, that's that can be kind of tricky to do. Um, So on the squeeze page that Alan had talked about, um, there's a couple things that I kind of liked about how they allow you to really do this, if you, especially if you're into squeeze pages, which it, it's, I guess that's okay if that's your thing. Um, so one of the things that I like is they've made it real easy to, to completely strip out um, not only the the, um, the header, I mean, it, to strip out pretty much everything, so, and inclu including putting it in your nav bar. So here we are, we're going to the squeeze page, I think, and I just want to show you kind of where it's at right now. Um, you know, looks kind of standard, but we want it to kind of go a little bit further, we want it to completely remove the header, we can either do it in the WordPress page, or we can do it, um, we can hide it from navigation, so it'll disappear from the navigation. It'll be a little bit more of a true squeeze page. Um, we can hide the header too, or you could, in theory, put in an alternate header. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that just so you can kind of see that happening um, in action. And you'll notice the header will be gone, and when I go to another page, it will no longer be a, a piece of, let me reload this, and this should be out of the navigation. Okay, let's see, and it's gone. So that was just a couple of clicks, of clicks. so that's a, that's a pretty nice piece of functionality there. Um, Talk a little bit about the CSS that I put into the site. You can see I didn't do a lot of CSS here. Um, and in part, I think that's because I could do a lot of that within the actual site, uh, or within Headway, which I think is a, a nice component. Um, they give you this little thing, but probably didn't notice, but the squeeze page, I put a different background instead of the stars. Um, but here it is, it's just pretty simple. One little kind of, 
thing that you're probably going to want to do. Um, I made the purple background for a specific page. Um, and I used a just a quick plugin called Simply Show IDs, just kind of to tell me what page is where and what have you. Um, just want to show you a quick example of an easy hook, because this is also a nice little piece that Headway does in order to give you some functionality. Um, so you can look in the header here. In fact, let me just go to the blog page because it'll just demonstrate it a little better. They have some built-in, um, I'm sorry, I didn't show you the leaves either. That's another piece that people really seem to enjoy, but they, they have this ability to just kind of throw in your socials uh, built-in, but if you don't like the way they did them, you possibly may want to add your own socials or different icons and what have you. So I just went ahead and kind of made one um, in the easy hook. So you can see this one is before the header link. It's pretty, um, pretty straight ahead. And it, it's, it, you know, once you kind of get the hang of it, it's, uh, it's a nice little feature, the easy hooks in particular. So um, our socials should be up here before the header. Um, and you can see them. Obviously, we would have removed the RSS subscribe link, but we're just kind of downloading. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the, the live CSS editor. This is a nice little feature that Headway has kind of built into the site. This um, will actually take precedence over the, uh, the CSS file. So this will be the last thing that loads on your site. So if you make any changes in live CSS, um, will ultimately be the, the changes that run your site. Um, okay. Tools. I've already put in a little one here. I just wanted to show you what happens. And you can see that it'll, see right there, it just put a purple background around it. Just does it right on the fly. Um, which is nice, especially if you're going to be making a lot of changes to your site. Um, Pages, single posts, I didn't show you the single posts, but they have a different sidebar than the blog page. Again, just to kind of demonstrate the ease of use. Um, and similar to Thesis, they have a lot of these kind of pieces baked into it. I customized the continue reading a little bit, um, moved to the right. So let's just, I guess, get into the pros and cons and just kind of go through it. Um, Overall, though, I have to say I've really enjoyed working in Headway. I think it's it's been um, it's uh, I've found it to be pretty user friendly. I think the biggest challenge is to is to get over the learning curve of it all. Um, but I think you're going to have that in any of these themes. And you know why that's not doing that is because that is um, the visual editor. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it's extremely versatile. There's some nice documentation. I'll show you that in a second. Um, it's very visual, which I think is a good plus for a lot of people. Uh, it's still very early in headway. It's about a year and a half old, um, which is relatively young. It's kind of gone through 1.0, now it's in the 2.0. Uh, one of the things that I like a lot is that the owners are very invested in the site. They're very active on the forums, uh, which at least to me anyway, speaks well. It's a uh, small business kind of philosophy. Um, and they're there, and I think that's important. Um, and I think the moderators are very good too, um, that are on top of it. So, and it's starting to get a, a pretty nice set of documentation. One of the downsides is um, there's a pretty big learning curve, obviously, just to, to kind of get it. I mean, I think they say this, uh, this is an affiliate link also, by the way. So. Um, but they talk about for beginners, um, maybe. I think for people who are mid-level to expert, it's actually a really nice theme. Um, and I had a couple other cons, but I think the forum was a big one in that they've changed the forum a couple of times, so they've lost a lot of the legacy content. But here's a, a nice little thing that they put together, which is just a CSS map. Um, this is just really helpful in terms of figuring out where, you know, what they call things to really help you find what it is you want to do and uh, 
And so it just makes the whole process of kind of customizing your site that much easier. Um, and then the documentation, I think they've done a nice job too of really just helping a new user come to Headway and see what it's all about. They have the, you know, pretty nice set of just links to just kind of walk you through it all. Got a nice set of video tutorials on top of this uh, elsewhere. Um, and that's it. Great. Thank you. One notable difference is that I believe that Headway will not require you to buy an additional license to deploy it on someone else's site. That's true. Whereas Thesis does charge a thing like 30 to 40 for that. It's not really 20, but yeah, it's a something. There's definitely an add-on. You know, one thing I've learned about I use about uh, maybe 60 sites for using Thesis, and the problem is there's a lot of uh, good web designers out there that know WordPress, but they don't send no Thesis. And yeah. if, if, if a guy hasn't done it likes three times, then you're going to pay a lot of time for him to learn it. So and I think that's true with any complex, super powerful theme like the Wake or Thesis. Is yeah. You want to try to find a web designer who actually has done several sites on there. Otherwise, you're going to pay for the Yeah. And as a user, you're going to you want to kind of make that commitment too. It's, uh, it's definitely they say for a beginner, but you know, Thesis definitely not. I've used Thesis and Headway, but similarly, probably not also. Um, but if you know you're going to build a couple sites, or if you think you're going to be building sites on a professional level, um, I've been pretty happy with Headway. So let's bring up Jen now, and we'll take a look at our third theme demonstration. And then what we'll do is then we'll open it up to all sorts of questions, um, which hopefully you'll have. So. I like about, I use Suffusion. I've used, um, used Suffusion for a couple of sites now for clients that are in the works, and I've decided to use it to renovate my own site. So if you go to my site um, the next week, you're probably going to see the old, you're going to see the old design because I'm working on a new design in Suffusion. Um, this looks a little different than the other two, basically, because one of the things I, I like about Suffusion is that uh, you have this featured content, so you can set that to display um, particular pages or particular posts, and it's very flexible um, to choose which ones it, which ones you want to show. Um, so with Suffusion, you get a lot of options. Um, I'll try to show you how that gets set right here. Um, one thing that is different, uh, they did change their uh, interface quite a bit with this new version. It used to be you had to go into the dashboard on the left side, and that had all your different options, like your, your basic options. What they did was they changed it, so now you go to appearance, and you click on Suffusion Options. It's, it's all up there, because before I just felt like I had to keep running back to the, the left side of the dashboard, I wanted to change any little thing, and it's like, that gets time consuming after a while. So, one con I'm gonna throw at you right now is that I wish they had drop-down menus for all these, like theme skinning, other graphic elements. I wish they, when you hovered over that, all their options drop down, because I'm trying to work on the thing, and I just forget, you know, what was where, working kind of fast, before I knew it, I had to um, give myself a map of all the different options and threw it out. So I got tired of trying to remember which, what was where. Um, but basically, for featured content, that's in your other graphical elements. So I'll show you that real quick. That's kind of a, something I really like about Suffusion. Um, When you get to other graphical elements, there's just all these different options that you see here. Um, some things, it's like you just have to remember what's 
what's more visually oriented than others, because some things are very content oriented, some of these options. Some are very visual, so you, it's, you just kind of make notes as you go along, that's, that's what I do. But here's featured content right here. Um, and it basically gives you a nice kind of fine-tuned control over, you can enable it, disable it, um, you can choose it to show tags, categories, static page, you pick a page that's going to show the featured content, and I chose the home page, which is a pottery dream come true. Um, so basically that's showing the gallery, and then what to show, you can show the latest posts, uh, you can show categories, or you can choose to show different pages, that's something I was really excited to see for my own site. I want to choose like selected pages. And basically what, what it does is the feature content function, it just pulls in, um, you can select what type of image it is um, being used for that. Um, um, sorry, I got that. Did that expire box? Just, yeah, drag, yeah, no, you know, just drag it down to the lower right hand corner. Oh, the lower right hand corner. All the way to the lower right hand corner. All the way. All the way. You crashed? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I mean, basically, it'll, it'll just take, like, you can set a featured image for a poster page. It'll show that as part of the, the sliding, uh, sliding content. Or you can set it to show a thumbnail, things like that. Um, so let me get back to you. Okay. So basically, that's why I did for the home page. I just wanted to showcase that that's a slightly different um, slightly different way you can do things like this. Uh, for the stuff at the top here, where it says lots, <coughs> learn about lots of really neat stuff, that's actually an embedded Google font. Um, on the other sites, it's just, that's all the, uh, the title and the lots of neat stuff, that's all part of the banner. But I thought, well, I wanna, I wanna try to use a Google font for this diffusion. So I found out that it doesn't really work with the custom includes, it doesn't mean put custom CSS in. It doesn't really go that extra little distance to grab it from the web. So um, what I ended up doing just for time's sake was just changing the actual style sheet that comes with the theme. So that's um, how I solved that little problem. I was able to get the uh, image in the background to hover over, but I wasn't able to do it for the sub page. I want the sub page to have just a plain purple background. And it turns out that's kind of a bug that they're having an issue with this diffusion. But they were very open about it. Um, the forum's actually pretty funny, because I want to do one of those little things. It's like, oh, I want to float, I want to have the menu on the right side of the page. And I thought, that's got to be a setting. You know, so I went through like theme skinning, graphic elements, main nav bar, and those sections you can see it. And I went in the forum, and that was a question right there. Someone said, how do you float the navigation to the other side of the page? And the first response was, you can't do that. I was like, what? That's crazy. And it was funny because the guy developed the theme, um, hope I pronounce his name right, Sayontan Sinha. <laughs> he had the next post in that form, and he was like, uh, you're crazy, you can totally do that. And he had the CSS right there, because that was just kind of, the form's very lively like that. But um, it was great, I could find the answer right away. He seems very active on his own form, which is good. Um, Video demo, I'll show you that. I'll just go through, show you the next page. Um, the video demo, uh, basically what I did was, um, I just changed you know, the, the background, the widgets and everything. Uh, it's a little different widgets. But the video demo is actually embedded Google code. Um, I did something where I use this site, it's called toolsfornews.com. And they will take Google, um, I know, I'm sorry, they'll take YouTube um, embed code, and they'll allow you to do that nice little border and kind of dress up with it. Um, something I've kind of seen in a couple forums is that people are having trouble with iframes and WordPress, so Tools for News sort of tries to help you with that issue. It's mostly when you put it in pages. Um, so that I'm saying that I've got clients that open a page that has an embedded Google map or something, and next thing you know, they're emailing you, hey, I have my map. Well, that's that's why the iframe is kind of skittish. Um, I can go 
to the, the widgets and show you that part. Um, not really part of strictly suffusion, but um, how I got the different widgets to show up in different pages. Um, I use this plugin that's called Widget Logic. Has anyone ever used that, Widget Logic? So I, I, I basically just went to where um, the sidebar configuration is the widgets and put the wide sidebar on the top put three different little widgets in there, um, and then embedded different things, and then widget logic, and then you just designate which page. So, um, like for the video code, it's the same thing, it just designate which page you want to show up on. Um, so, This other widget down here that you're seeing kind of flashing, there's actually a feature content widget that comes with suffusion, which is nice because then you can have this, you know, if you choose not to have feature content anywhere on the pages in the content part, you can still have a nice widget that shows like little thumbnails and stuff. So this is basically the um, the page with uh, the two sidebars. The blog, um, I wanted to go and like, kind of delve into this more, but I just ran out of time. But it seems to also contain a feature content function. So if you want that, it's great that it's already there. Um, and then I can show you really quick to show you the first method. I had to do a lot of um, CSS customization to get a lot of the, the look of that. Um, so this page here, it's not a test blog that I have where I'm trying to develop a new version of the site using Suffusion. And I basically put this article together this afternoon. And it's got the outline that I wrote out. So it's got the outline of the, um, the options. So I want to kind of write more about that and tell you, like, you know, which options are which. Because if you'll notice, under, <coughs> it's funny how things show up twice. You know, I have theme skinny, then you have hot navigation, main navigation, then you have other graphic elements, and you have top nav bar and main nav bar. So that's that's one thing with suffusion, you kind of get lost in your options. Um, so I find it really helps to take notes as I go along, not only for this project in particular, but for any project. But the great thing is, once you have all your options set, everything's configured, um, it's pretty easy to export everything to a new, say, like what I do, I develop sites on test sites for clients, and then when they're ready to make the site live, I export everything. So Suffusion makes it very easy to export. So um, the reason I'm showing you basically this part of it is this is, um, this is Alan's design at the top right here. Um, and then this, when, you first, when I first installed Suffusion and got that working, when I picked my basic skin, this is what I got, was this black and white, very basic skin. And this is all the code. Um, so you can see where I did some things with the blog titles and kind of descriptions. Um, went through all that customization, you know, a fair amount, and then I ended up with the site working like this. So. Um, it's pretty, uh, as far as I'm saying, the page background for that specific page, um, what I do is I just went and hit view source uh, when I was looking at the home page, and I found out that it's got a specific div class, or a div ID of pose 5. Then I was like, oh, okay, I'll go to custom CSS and I'll add that style rule, and lo and behold, and it worked. So it was, it was, um, useful for that. Um, um, pretty much that's, as far as the, I got pros and cons too. I'm gonna type them out. Yeah, the, the pros are, um, if you know CSS and you just hit view source, you can find a lot of what you need to do. You can find a good percentage of what you need to do.
do. Um, there's a great forum. They're really responsive. It isn't like you type in a question every two weeks. Um, people are very supportive. Um, I like the feature content function. I think that's really helpful. Uh, people, my clients kind of seem to get visually excited by that. And you also get nice fine control over your layout and it's flexible. Um, and you can export your export and import your settings. As far as the cons, um, I thought the options grouping was a little arbitrary. I mean, there's things like, you know, it's pretty big stuff, like the wrapper is set to show rounded corners. And you would think, like, you know, something main wrapper would let you take the corner look of it. And you have to go to miscellaneous, and that's, that's the only thing in miscellaneous, is set the rounded corners for the wrapper. Um, and I really want, I really wish that there was a drop down menu for the, um, for the options. To me, that just really kills me. I have to keep kind of stabbing around to find what I'm looking for. You have to really get used to it, basically. You have to really work with it quite a bit to get fully comfortable with it. So. Yeah, there's one big pro that you just mentioned. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very economical. It's free, so it's worth it some of that extra digging around. Yeah, don't panic. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Unless they have specifically asked you to design something that can be completely turned over to them. Um, so what do you feel about working with clients and trying um, to change things? I kind of work with clients that aren't that computer savvy, but I can see them like, you know, figuring out the feature content aspect of it, you know, figuring that part out. If it's like drag and drop or choosing options, I can see that, but asking them to do it going and like do custom yeah, that's, I mean, they're hiring us in the first place to, to do these things so that they could focus on what they do really well, which is which is the content and what they should do. So what kinds of things did you guys find in the themes that made it easier for the users to create content? Like, I know Hybrid, for example, has about 20-page templates that make it easy to do site maps, logins, archives, that kind of thing. Elegant Themes has short codes, extra widgets, extra page templates to make adding all kinds of content easy for the actual user. A lot of you guys went over seems like more developer stuff. Mm -hmm. right. so, uh, I would say that CSS, you know, uh, making it really easy for the users ultimately to put in um, all of the meta tagging that is going to make their content show up on the web a lot easier. That's that's one of the things that I think all yeah. three and certainly the thesis does. Uh, the, the oh, okay. have a good in every yeah. page. Were there page templates or short codes or um, yeah, extra widgets? One thing these? with Headway that's pretty nice actually, and we talked about it, is they have yeah. leaves that are built in. Um, you can drag and drop them in, and there's a, each leaf has kind of a different functionality. You can use an HTML leaf, a slider leaf. Uh, that's in the right direction. Yeah, and the short codes, I mean, they're, they're pretty specific to each theme. They, they have, I think a lot of it is they kind of did it with leaves. It's their, they kind of looked at it as the short codes are great if you're somewhat technical, um, but to know how to put the brackets in and what, how to do it and all that. Well, um, with elegant themes, they have an actual button on the WYSIWYG that makes it so you press it and it wraps it with the short code and it automatically formats it on the front end so you can do all kinds of crazy buttons, sliders, and stuff like that. And I'm looking mm -hmm. for other frameworks that do that. Uh -huh. so. This one I thought was very nice on the headway but they actually have a preview of what they're estimating the Google search 
result might actually yeah. look like when they build it for you very visually. I think that's, that's a terrific rule. Again, they're not, they're not guaranteeing that that's exactly the way it's going to come out, but, yeah. but uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. You can rename your page versus what the page is up on the URL, so, so the page title. I think you're probably going to find you're going to do it the other way around. In other words, um, you're going to decide, I'm going to use this uh, framework, and I'm going to go back to the site that I did some customizations, and I'm going to pick up some of those elements. Probably you did some CSS coding to do that, and you're going to apply that through the new framework. Uh, but um, that would be the way that I, I would yeah, use yeah, for me, the most important thing is kind of like when you find, you choosing any platform, is it going to be around five or ten years from now? The reason I went to Thesis is, is Chris Pearson is making so much ridiculous amount of money off Thesis that I'm pretty sure that it's economically rational for him to keep on just riding the gravy train. Yeah. And uh, he's done that because he charges a fair amount of money, but he's just selling a ton of copies. Right. But it's, it's a very intangible thing. It's very hard to tell because what you want is WordPress is, is it's so rapidly evolving so quickly that some things can be broken like you know, every version and it takes like forever to kind of tend to catch up. And, and yeah. That's my biggest problem with the free thing is, is the guy five years from now still going to be keeping it up? Yeah, I would say if you want an industrial strength, if you're going to have something that you're going to sell to somebody else or whatever, I mean, I would personally feel better spending a little bit of money. I, I don't think either thesis or headway is really a lot of money to spend for the kind of functionality you're getting and you know, charge off for the clients anyway. So I would probably design in those. If you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it. Hop, you're obviously got a, a different, got a different uh, take on that. But um, I, I'm intrigued by uh, what Suffusion has done, and I think you can tell from his interest level um, and, and the things that he writes about in, in forums that he wants to be around for a while. But if he's not, well, then you're kind of stuck. I think that's a problem. Um, I think a bigger question is, is uh, are you putting, you know, the, okay, so a theme costs UX, but to learn how to use that theme yeah. takes a long time. To learn how to use it very well takes an even longer time. And you're, you're in essence, you're, pay, you're placing a bet on that particular theme being the theme that's going to do the things you want. It's also going to evolve into what you want it to do. Um, right. I mean, I, I, if you go and you Google, you know, WP thesis, and by the way, you have to put the WP in front of it because otherwise you get all sorts yeah. of things that are not going to be related. But it, it's really easy to find hundreds, of thousands of, of pages of, of, you know, just all sorts of ways, tutorials and, and little articles and how do you do this? And you know, here are just some of my recent bookmarks there about you know how do you add a custom image the size of an AV or you know how do you add a widget wherever you want them. I mean, it's really easy to find the how-tos, and those are invaluable. Same thing with Headway. At, at Suffusion, I don't know if you could, probably within the forum, you can get the answers, like you said, yeah. you got the answer right away. Mm -hmm. So you definitely, no matter what what framework you pick, um, I think that's the most important thing. You want to be comfortable that you're going to be able to get answers on how to do this, because um, you, you know, if you're going to customize it, you're going to run into things that are just not in the basic documentation? I've been using Suffusion for months. Last night was the first time I had to go on the forum. So that's... <laughs> In the back? Yeah, we'll come back. Uh, each of those themes have certain quirks, as we know. I'm sorry, a little bit. Each of the themes have certain quirks, as we know. Certain things are easier to make. Certain things are, will take much more time. Yes. Often clients who are not aware of those diff difficult complications might ask the feature that becomes in this particular tool is very time consuming to make. How do you navigate this request? If client asks you to do something that is, for, you know that technically it would be a couple of days to implement and, as a feature, and, and you're still trying to work within certain budget. Well, you know, I know somebody who can make a um, uh, a cello sounds like the most amazing pipe organs around. 
you know, and, and he's figured out how to do that, and he's got the software, and he's got the hardware, and I gotta tell you, you close your eyes, and, and you think you're hearing this amazing pipe organ, and he's playing on, a, on his electronic cello. Point is, he knows how to make his tool do something. And I think with any of the frameworks, you know, it's a tool. The more you know how to use it and how to do things, you're gonna be able to accommodate your client's request to know, is this gonna be an efficient use of my time, and therefore, time usually translates in some way back to money and, and what you're gonna charge the client to be able to accomplish that. If it's not efficient, you're probably gonna be looking for a different tool. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Maybe there isn't a plugin that'll do it. Um, I just figure if it's, if it's something that I think other clients are gonna to wanna to use, then it's probably worth my time to figure it out. Um, and I, I just don't build them for every second I spend at Google. I mean, I just, I build them I think as a fair, reasonable rate, you know, if it includes the scope of work. Um, but then I figure, oh, I've got that for the next time. You know, the next time someone asks for it, boom, there it is, I've got it. So it works out in the end. Over here. Um, do any of these frameworks make it possible to set up the structure for a site so that you can then import larger amounts of data to essentially propagate for the page development of your site. So if you know you're gonna have a thousand page site and all the pages are gonna be structured a certain way, uh, you have a data file that tags the content for each portion of the page, is there a way to get it into a WordPress uh, framework? I, I, know that, I know that with Thesis, um, there are are a number of pretty large sites that have used it and have, and, and I'm assuming therefore they have a lot of content pages behind it. So, um, I'm sorry. So evaluate on this question, are you talking about utilizing like custom post types so that you can uh, structure an entire post with set fields? You're asking me? Yeah. I wanted to know if you have either a standardized post type, essentially like a page that you can find. You know that there's a header component, an image component, content component, maybe some other things that you've defined, but you've got a thousand instances, they're all different combinations. Is there an import tool, essentially, or a way to connect your WordPress site with a data file? I think you'd be better off just uh, importing it directly into MySQL. Yeah. Okay. Just figure out what the data structure is and importing it into MySQL is pretty trivial. Do it you know, programmatically or do a CSV file or or you can use the WordPress the importer as, like, to uh, format it as XML, like the same way that the WordPress uses it, and yeah. import it as pages and post that way too. Okay. So. All of the themes have an ability to have tagging, so that you can uh, uh, probably do what it is you're trying to do, and, and use it, filter on it. Back there? This is a, kind of a, a broader question, not specific to themes, but I'm gathering that the three of you own or operate web design firms serving small to medium-sized businesses, and it seems like you're implementing WordPress solutions for your clients. And I guess my question is, is that for their front end marketing site or is this primarily for, you know, hey, we're company XYZ and we wanna have a blog to engage our entire staff in, you know, posting to, to the blog. Are you, are you doing a company's main corporate presence in WordPress? And if so, why WordPress versus another content management system like, I don't know, Joomla or, or a PHP, you know, custom CMS or something like that? I'm okay. just curious. I'm, I'm kind of a WordPress newbie. Sure. And, and um, I just finished up a project that was actually done in um, Drupal. Okay. And uh, it wasn't my choice to go to Drupal. I was brought into it after the decision to... to the move to Drupal had already been made and a lot of work had been done. So although I could have backed out of it, we could have, we could have done anything. But WordPress, we could have done whatever we needed. Um, the internal learning curve had, had been already uh, uh, achieved a lot of, had already clocked a lot of hours, you know what I mean? And so I didn't want to have to go back and, and redo all that. Um, in hindsight, I wish we had rebuilt the site on, on WordPress. Um, I, I really, think that anything that um, that was being done in Drupal was taking um, three times as long and costing at least twice as much as what I know we could have done in, in WordPress. I'm, I'm getting some head shaking. Does anybody have any <laughs> other? <laughs> just, just recently, actually, there's a Drupal post where um, I think it was a couple of Drupal developers 
complaining about the fact that WordPress unity is so strong and everyone helps each other out. Yeah. Uh, specifically, if you go to the Drupal forums, you'll find a lot of random code documentation. You can eventually find what you're trying to do, but in WordPress, it's more like, I'm trying to do this on my website. That's like a specific function. People will walk you through how to do it, right. rather than just throwing the code at you. Right. So it's more it, the community. It's idea. really, it's, it's, you're absolutely right on that. It's the community behind it. And even things like WordCamp, when I, came, when, I went, when I went to work camp here and also in New York, I think it was a $40 ticket to go to work camp, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around that, very reasonable price. Um, when I did Drupal camp, it was like $900. I mean, it's just, it, it's just ridiculously more money trying to find, you know, people who are Drupal developers actually command a higher hourly wage because there are fewer of them um, and they're in demand. Um, it's it, it, harder just, to work just, it, just to defend it, a guy I know who knows all three CMSs really well ranks WordPress and then Drupal and Drupal in terms of power. So uh, Drupal is good if you want to do something very, very sophisticated and you're willing to put a massive amount of time. You're going to need a much higher caliber of programmer. The, the, the visual design sucks and you're going to have to basically do that from scratch. They don't have the themes, they don't have the plugins. A lot of times they charge for plugins. So it's something like, like I really think of a big company type thing or a very, very sophisticated system. If you're talking about a small business, it's hard to imagine that WordPress would not be the most logical choice. So you want to? The thing I'm concerned about with Drupal is I've had customers go to Drupal and uh, they didn't really want to see them as a program where they could have intercompany interactivity with the company to go and make changes. Are you talking about content? Well, well, no, they can go in and, and you know, change, uh, change words, change copies. Well, well, I think all, all three CMSs do a good job, particularly WordPress, do a I good job. no more difficult than that. For for the, for the if users. you're just talking about typing in words, yeah. any CMS can do that. But WordPress, I think, is particularly, from a writer's point of view, WordPress is like a dream country. Even just to get the WYSIWYG to work, don't you have to install a module on Drupal just to yes, get the extra things? Yeah. I mean, I think like, for the yeah, and I had, I had editors who were putting in content all the time on Drupal, and they were coming to me straight yeah. because it's so hard for them. And things that are just like built into the core exactly. of WordPress were things that were going to take my developers more time to build a better back end. Just to maintain the site, yeah. I think, is much more difficult. I think yeah. an easy way to think about it is, is Drupal is designed for programmers, and WordPress is designed for writers. Well, I, I think much WordPress easier, more and with more. With that audience in mind, WordPress is designed to be much easier well, it, to use. Yeah, I think the heritage of it is such. But again, I, I kind of want to bring people back to what we're really the scope of what we're presenting. <laughs> I'd love to debate you all on, on Drupal versus WordPress versus whatever. But um, last question. I just had a question. On, I guess about diffusion. You were talking about the feature content. Yeah. So you had the image moving right to left. Was that like a jQuery? Uh, yes, yeah, jQuery. Is it, is it part of it? Did, did you do that specifically? Oh, no. Or is it, so that's integrated with? It's integrated. Do you have any before. kind of transition sliding okay. down? That, that's all in We're going to be around here for a little while longer because I know some other people have their hands up, but, but uh, I guess we've got to uh, start to break down. Um, but um, thank you very much. Uh, you were a wonderful audience. Um, and we're, uh, we're really, you know, we're, we're really, we did this for you guys, so don't hesitate to reach out.